Your local news is next. Now on Eyewitness News 4. The idea has been tossed around. Now a serious push to make Albuquerque's west side its own city. Today, some New Mexico students stepped into their new school for the first time. It's so big, some needed maps. And the state's top elected Republican is set to duel tomorrow in Texas. This is Eyewitness News 4 at 10. People who live on Albuquerque's west side could soon vote if their area should secede from the city. If it passes, west side city boundary lines would be drawn at the Rio Grande, the Rio Puerco, the Sandoval County line to the north, and I-40 to the south. The bill first has to go to state lawmakers where there could be a fight. Lauren Prisville is live on the west side with the details. Lauren? Tom and Carla, a state senator who represents part of the west side here says enough is enough. He says he is tired of the west side being overlooked and he's taking his argument straight to the top. The new west side city would consist of 100,000 people. You have to first go ahead and have a bill passed in the legislature that's going to allow us to do that legally. And then after that step occurs, then we have to petition the Bernalillo County Commission to go ahead and grant us permission to have an election. State Senator Joe Carrero says there is no other alternative. He made up his mind to write the bill after the last bond election in which he says the west side was passed over again. In the election, all bonds passed except for a road bond that included extending Paseo del Norte. People are fed up with waiting. Uh, we've gone ahead and paid our dues. It's about time we got some membership back. Linda Lopez, another West Side State Senator, says she is strongly against the succession, saying the finances aren't there. State Senator Bernadette Sanchez says she needs to talk to her constituents before making a decision. But some West Siders say they've made up their mind. Albuquerque is getting big, especially the school system. Uh, APS and um, I think the school system would do better if it was broken up. I think that might be good. We get our roads fixed and some sidewalks around here. There has been talk about the west side succeeding for some time now, but this is the first time an actual bill will go before legislators. Tomorrow, Senator Carrera will present the bill to west side neighborhood associations, hoping to gain some support. The le legislative session begins in two weeks. Live near Coors, I'm Lauren Prisbal, Eyewitness News 4. Thank you, Lauren. Governor Richardson says his top priority for the upcoming legislative session is to toughen the state's DWI laws. Today, he announced how he wants to do that. The proposed legislation includes tougher penalties for DWI crashes that kill or injure and closes a loophole, making it a separate crime to refuse a blood alcohol or breath test. In addition, the governor is asking lawmakers to create severe penalties for people who provide alcohol to minors who then kill or injure themselves. Last year, Christopher Chavez was sentenced to probation for buying alcohol for a 14-year-old girl who died of alcohol poisoning. At the time, the judge apologized, saying a state law did not allow for a stiffer sentence. The driver in one of New Mexico's most, most notorious fatal DWI crashes was back in court today looking for a lighter sentence. But a judge instead resentenced Lloyd Larson to the same 20-year prison sentence he had ordered last August. Larson killed four people from Nebraska when he drove his Bureau of Indian Affairs truck drunk the wrong way on I-42 years ago. The victims' families today applauded the judge for sticking to the original sentence. I want to thank Judge Hansen for what he did today. I think he would like to have probably um, give a longer sentence, but uh, the law is kind of tell him what he has to do. An appeals court ordered the resentencing, saying the judge didn't give Larson's attorney enough notice about the additional prison time the first time he was sentenced. As with the first one, Larson's attorney is expected to appeal today's sentence. Within about a week, Albuquerque police will start going after aggressive panhandlers. The Albuquerque City Council passed a new ordinance last night. Now the question is, how will police enforce the law? Kim Holland is live in downtown Albuquerque to explain. Kim. Tom, the new ordinance would prohibit panhandlers from the downtown area and Knob Hill area altogether at any time. And the police chief says it will be a challenge to enforce. John Moore hangs out on this busy street corner late Tuesday evening. A medication that I have to have 
And when I run short and don't don't have it, I come out here. This is the only reason I come out here. I do fairly well. I, I can't complain. The new ordinance will require panhandlers to stay three feet away from people. It also bans panhandlers from touching people or approaching people waiting in line. It also makes panhandling illegal after dark. I believe that we do have the officers to enforce panhandling. Panhandling is a petty misdemeanor with a maximum punishment of a $500 fine and 90 days in jail. But an officer has to witness the offense. The police chief says the public will play a big role in enforcing this ordinance. We're probably going to um, respond primarily to complaints from, from the community. Uh, we know that there are some problem areas and we will be working in those areas to uh, to uh, try and alleviate the problem of uh, aggressive panhandling. Panhandler John Moore says the new ordinance is reasonable. I agree with that because me, I don't even approach a car unless somebody let the window down and tell me to come to the car. The chief says that officers will go through special training to learn about this ordinance. The mayor plans to sign the ordinance by this week. It will then go into effect five days later. Reporting live in downtown Albuquerque, Kim Holland, Eyewitness News 4. Kim, thank you. Three people are in custody after multi-agencies catch them setting up a suspected meth lab in northeast Albuquerque. State police say they followed a man to the Silverado apartments on Osuna and San Mateo. They say he had just purchased several materials for making meth. When he arrived at the apartment, two men and one woman were taken into custody. One of the suspects had to be treated for chest pains and was transported to UNM Hospital. Some northern New Mexico P&M customers may want to check their pilot lights tonight after a refinery fire. The fire broke out this afternoon at the Williams plant that's in the town of Lybrook. The ref refinery and a nearby elementary school were evacuated and US 550 was shut down while crews worked to put out that fire. No word yet on how it started. PNM says the fire caused unprocessed gas to enter its system. Customers in Cuba and to a lesser extent Los Alamos, Española and Taos could be impacted. If you live in one of those areas and notice your pilot light is out, you are asked to call PNM. The flu is being blamed for the death of another child in New Mexico. State health officials say a three-month-old McKinley County boy died from a bacterial infection after coming down with the flu. The boy died last month, but the CDC just confirmed the death is flu-related. This is the third pediatric flu death in New Mexico since the flu season began in November. Two kids in Bernalillo County died over the Thanksgiving holiday. A man is in jail tonight for punching another man two years ago, causing severe brain damage. Guadalupe Vicente Moreno is accused of punching 28-year-old Joseph Deli once in the head in the parking lot of a northeast Albuquerque nightclub. Police say they've been trying to track Moreno down for the past two years. Deli's family says since the attack, he's needed 24-hour care because of brain damage. We had to teach him how to walk, talk, eat, uh, go to the bathroom, all over again. Moreno is charged with aggravated battery with great bodily harm. The police report doesn't say exactly why the punch was thrown. Bond is set at $2 million for a Carlsbad man accused of hiring a hitman to kill his ex-wife and the man she's been dating. 46-year-old Harold Prater faces two counts of criminal solicitation to commit first-degree murder. Police say Prater hired this 19-year-old to do the job. The teen's father heard about the plan and called police. I had no choice uh, but to do what I did. I don't want to see anyone go to prison, uh, but I had no choice. It was for the love of my son and no other reason uh, that, I, that I had to uh, turn over this evidence to the authorities. Police say Prater paid the teenager $2,500 up front and was going to pay him another $2,500 after the hit was complete. The teen says he never really intended to carry out the killings. New Mexico State Police have a new phone number for you to call if you have information about a crime that's been committed. The new statewide toll-free number is 1-888-442-6677. State police officers say it's part of an effort to make the department more accessible to New Mexicans. You can call the number to report a crime in progress or one that has already been committed. A flight from Paris to Cincinnati raised red flags this afternoon, but tonight authorities say it was just a false alarm. The Delta Airlines Air France flight landed safely at Cincinnati's airport. Concerns were raised when a suspicious passenger was seen wearing a jacket that had wires coming out of it. She was removed from the plane. Turns out the jacket just had a special heating system built into it.
Outside the airport in Baltimore today, officers conducted surprise searches on every single vehicle that drove up to the terminal. Traffic was backed up for miles, but people who flew into the Sunport from Baltimore said no one was complaining about the delays. I feel a lot safer with my children traveling. I'm going to drag you into it, Tommy. <laughs> knowing that they're checking everything. Now, nobody was complaining. I think, you know, everybody's pretty uh, tolerant of the, uh, of the, you know, threat level right now. So I think it's, they would just, you know, go ahead and go. Officers said today's sweep was not in response to any specific threat, and they'll do similar searches in the future. The agency in charge of the World Trade Center site has picked the design for the September 11th memorial. The design, called Reflecting Absence, was one of 5,000 entries. It includes twin reflecting pools and a grove of trees. The families of some victims are already complaining, saying it doesn't convey the horror of what happened. New details tonight on sexual abuse in the Santa Fe Archdiocese. How many priests were involved and how much it cost the Archdiocese coming up next at 10. Plus, the New Mexico school system is rebuilt from the ground up, and this multi-million dollar new high school is just the beginning. And New Mexico and Texas land commissioners are picking up guns to settle the dispute over this land. No dispute over the coldest temperature in the state this morning, 15 below at Chama. It warmed into the 30s, 40s, and 50s today with Albuquerque checking in with an official 42-degree high after a very cold low of 17. But we're looking at warmer temperatures coming up at the Pinpoint Forecast. Working for you with Tom Joles, Carla Aragon, meteorologist Larry Rice, and J.P. Murrieta with sports. This is Eyewitness News 4 at 10. Eyewitness News 4 is sponsored by Dodge. Time to pack the pit. Saturday, January 17th against the Air Force. Bench tickets only 10 bucks. Call 925-5858. It's just not the same unless you're at the game. Western Warehouse and Wrangler presents the Bud Light Super Bowl Tour Championship Bull Riding this Saturday night at 8 Tingley Coliseum. Adam Campbell. Don't miss your only chance. One big night only. See more than 40 of the world's toughest bull riders. Against the rankest, roughest buck and bull. Reserve seats now at all Ticketmaster ticket centers, including Foley. Select Smith's Food and Drugs, Warehouse Music, FYE, and Santa Fe. Ticketmaster.com or by phone. We'll sell you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Channel. Nearly a thousand people braved the cold this morning to meet Senator and former First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. Senator Clinton signed copies of her autobiography, Living History, this morning at Page One Bookstore in Northeast Albuquerque. The line for the events stretched around the corner and down Montgomery as people waited to spend a few moments with Clinton. A year and a half after promising reform, the Catholic Church gave itself a pat on the back today. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops today released the first part of an audit examining how dioceses are dealing with the problem of priest sexual abuse. The study found most, including the Santa Fe Archdiocese, are in full compliance. Critics say the audit by the church, about the church, doesn't say much. The interviewers had to rely largely on subjective material that was given voluntarily and given by essentially the same men who have for decades fought to keep the crimes of clergy concealed. We have done everything we can to remove anyone that we know of who has uh, been accused and has a credible allegation against them. Two retired FBI agents served as the auditors for the Santa Fe Archdiocese. Archbishop Michael Sheehan says they made several recommendations which were quickly addressed. The audit shows over the last 50 years, the Santa Fe Archdiocese had a total of 44 priests and two deacons who had credible allegations made against them. Sheehan says none of them are still active in the ministry. To date, the Archdiocese has paid out more than $25 million to settle sexual abuse cases involving minors. 
It spent another $4.7 million on attorney's fees. A South Valley church shut down by the city is back open tonight. The People for Jesus Church on West Central says its building is back up to code. The city shut down the church, which also served as a homeless shelter, in November because of numerous code violations involving electrical wiring, gas, and plumbing. It took eight long years, but the future of four communities has been solidified all by one project. That project, a brand new high school on Laguna Pueblo. Shelton Dodson has a story. Shelton. Tom and Carla, this new school is just the latest chapter of a truly great story. There has been a fabulous community effort to make sure that the old problems stay behind at the old high school. For the first time, students stepped off the bus and into the $18 million Laguna Acoma High School. Down in that area, over there. Down that You'll have to forgive them if they don't know where everything is, both the students and the teachers. I'm not familiar with the bell, so I don't know what it sounds like. I, I thought I heard it, but I don't know. Let me see, where's the lobby? We're right here. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to learn our way around as well as the students. But it's what you don't see, which may be the best news of all. The Kellogg Foundation put up a $220,000 grant to study the needs of this community. The result? A new curriculum structured specifically for this culturally diverse area. Basically, a down payment on the future. Even though all these students see right now is the beautiful present in their new high school. It's bigger and it's more colorful, as you can see, than, and it's just spacious. It's big, it's clean, it's 10 times better than our old campus. It's gorgeous. I can't believe we, we finally get to be in here. We waited a long time and oh, it's exciting. They did wait a long time. Construction delays pushed the opening of Laguna Acoma High School back from August until today. There is still a gym and athletic fields to be built. Hopefully they'll be ready by this coming August. Carla? Shelton, thank you. A 145-year-old border dispute between New Mexico and Texas may finally be settled the old-fashioned way with an old-fashioned duel. Tomorrow, New Mexico Land Commissioner Patrick Lyons and Texas Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson will face off. The duel is scheduled for tomorrow afternoon on a Texas ranch. The commissioners will use antique pistols and then compete in a skeet shoot. The dispute is over 600,000 acres of land given to Texas during a botched land survey. New Mexico has been fighting to get the land back since before statehood. Both commissioners say while the duel won't legally settle the dispute, it should be fun. Now, your pinpoint forecast. Hello Albuquerque, good evening New Mexico. 35 degrees right now with calm winds at the Sunport and a check of our WeatherNet sites around the state showing some 20s in parts of the city. 29 at Jefferson Middle School at Lomas and Girard. We've got 27 at Hagerman Middle School south of Roswell, Los Lunas, Valencia Elementary at 29 and Silver City at 33 degrees after highs in the 40s and 50s today. And a look across the state at our temperatures in the northeast showing teens right now at Raton and Las Vegas, 18 at Clovis, 27 at the airport in Santa Fe, 30s across the southwest, and we're looking at some 20s in the northwest thanks to some cloud cover holding in some of the heat here. But the cold air that's in place in the eastern plains will be replaced overnight by a weak southerly flow, and that brings in moist, warm air, and that's going to help boost the temperatures overnight into tomorrow morning. We'll also get a piece of this energy moving in off the west coast that'll clip the four corners with a slight chance of some isolated snow flurries. But farther to the north, it is not snow flurries. It's heavy snow in Washington and Oregon, and it's changing over to freezing rain. About four to six inches of snow reported in Seattle, freezing rain and ice in Portland, and some rain showers all the way down the Pacific coast. And again, a piece of that energy is heading in our direction, but not enough to really do any good at this point. The really cold air across the the center of the U.S. will be easing up a bit as we head into tomorrow, but we're still looking at some isolated snow showers in New England. And instead of snow on the Pacific Northwest Coast, it's rain. The snow moves into the inland mountain areas. And temperatures, again, not as cold.
cold as we've seen the last couple of days. Balmy teens in the northern plains, about 20. Cleveland, 32. Washington, D.C. We'll see 60s in Phoenix, 45 at Dallas, and a warmer 50 expected at Amarillo. Here's a look at our pinpoint future cast as we head through the overnight hours. Again, maybe a flurry across the four corners, and that's really about it. Most of the energy and the moisture gets shunted to the north, so we get mid and high level clouds kind of filtering our sunshine. And then Thursday looks like a mostly sunny day statewide, and again, no real import of moisture into the state, but we will see warmer temperatures heading into the weekend. Lows overnight in the southeast, and many of these temperatures have already been reached in the 20s. We're seeing highs tomorrow in the 50s to right around 60. For the southwest, you'll start off the day in the 20s and 30s with highs tomorrow that will be in the 40s, 50s to low 60s. In the four corners, again, warmer at Chama, 15 below this morning. A warm zero tomorrow. 20 expected in Farmington highs, mostly in the 40s. And northeastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, starting off the day in the single digits, teens to around 20 in highs that will range from the 40s to near 60 degrees. Santa Fe, Española, and Los Alamos looking at temperatures overnight that will be in the 20s with a couple of teens and highs tomorrow expected to be in the low to mid 40s. Again, look for high clouds and hazy sunshine. We'll see teens and 20s in the East Mountains overnight with 40s to near 50 for your highs. Bernalillo, Placidas, Los Lunas, and Berlin from the upper teens to the mid-20s and 40s to about 50 for highs tomorrow. Albuquerque looking for about 23 in the heights, 20 in the valley, mid-40s tomorrow afternoon. Okay to use the fireplace or wood stove and take a look at the warmth heading our way as we head into the weekend. Upper 40s, close to 50 at times. Then another weak front comes in on Sunday, kicking up the breeze and bringing us some slightly cooler temperatures and a few extra clouds, but not a bit of moisture heading really in our direction mm. at this point. Doesn't we need it. That Thanks. Is, yes. Two of the best girls teams in the metro area go at it tonight. Highlights of Rio Rancho versus Sandia next. And see if the Loba men took it to San Diego tonight. Here are your winning lottery numbers. Live local coverage this morning. We were live with the latest developments having to do with the drunk driving case of Lloyd Larson. Here at Federal District Court, a judge will issue a final sentence for Lloyd Larson later this afternoon. Tomorrow, more live coverage of any local breaking news. Plus, your pinpoint forecast lets you know if it's ever going to warm up and will help you get organized and say thank you to your customers. You'll get more local news from Steve Stucker and Monica Armenta tomorrow morning on Eyewitness News for today from 5 to 7 a.m. Eyewitness News 4 is sponsored by Sonic. Critics are calling Big Fish Tim Burton's masterpiece. It truly is. And now it has been nominated for four Golden Globes, including Best Picture. You are in for a surprise. Big Fish. Rated PG-13. Opens everywhere Friday. The first bullet shattered his hand. The second and third hit his shoulder and leg. As he hit the jungle floor, he rallied the troops and directed the firefight. He remained with his unit until the battle was over. Now when we need a leader to clean up the mess in Iraq, he's the one who has done it. In the Balkans, he helped negotiate a peace between bitter enemies and led a multinational force that stopped a campaign of terror, liberated a people, and brought peace without the loss of a single American soldier. He speaks four languages, but his actions speak more eloquently than words. He can get our country moving on jobs and health care. A quiet, real American courage in a man who cares first about the people he leads. Wes Clark's life is simply an American story, but he will make an extraordinary American president. I'm Wes Clark, and I approve this message. I'm Nelson Martinez. When I decided to get back into local television, I knew I didn't want to just join any team. I wanted to be part of a news team that is committed to digging deeper and going beyond the headlines. A team that is dedicated to getting the story right every time. I wanted to join a news leader that strives to get you the coverage you want in a timely manner. And I wanted to be part of a television station that I would even turn to for local news. And that's why I'm proud to now be joining KOB-TV Eyewitness News 4. The Lobo men back in the pit tonight were it's friendly. And they weren't totally happy with this victory. They thought it should have been bigger. The Lobos hosted San Diego tonight. The Toreros had a front line of 6'8", 6'8", and 6'10", but tonight size didn't matter. Scary moment early in the game. USD center Nick Lewis banging the boards. He's number 42. Gets hit on the head by his teammate Bryce Boonang. Looks like he got knocked out. He was on his back for about 10 minutes. Almost the same spot where Senku Carey lay motionless last year. Lewis was removed from the court on a stretcher, taken to UNM Hospital. 
He's in satisfactory condition. Once the game got underway again, it was all Lobos. Javen Tyndall with the easy two. He finished with 10 tonight, a couple Lobos in double figures. And Danny Granger, the guy everyone's been talking about off the feet from Mark Walters. Dunky very much. She had a double-double, 17 points, 14 boards. Lobos pick up their eighth victory, 88-75. It's the program's 1,200th win. Alfred Neal led the way with a season-high 24 points. He also scored five of New Mexico's 15 three-pointers. Troy DeVries was six of nine from three-point range and put up 22 points to go along with seven assists. Now, the Lobos are happy to be home in their first of two at the pit this week. The Lobos did a little house cleaning and started with the glass. Here's Lobo insider Lee Faria. Now, when you win the battle of the boards, more often than not, you're going to win the game. Tonight, the Lobos allowed only 11 rebounds in that first 20 and raced to a 19-point lead at the half. The Lobos have dominated the defensive glass of late, and giving their opponents only one shot. One reason is because their guards are willing to hit the glass. Here, Troy DeVries is playing the weak side. His man breaks to the three-point line, but DeVries stays on the lane, gets the easy rebound, a guard willing to battle. Here's the classic box out. Ball goes up from the far side. David Coyote finds his man and puts 250 pounds on him. That's textbook. Coyote gets the rebound. The coach talks all the time about toughness, and. Uh, rebounding the ball and uh, we've responded and really listened to what he he has to say about that and we've been rebounding really well. Now in addition to the rebounds the Lobo shot 51 percent from the floor and had four players in double figures. JP. Thanks Lee. A couple of top five squaring off tonight. Rio Rancho and Sandia. Rio Rodi launching one from long range. The future Cal Hoopster nails the three but Rio Rancho found themselves in a hole early just before the end of the first. Matadors with some muscle grabbing the rebound. Angelina Dennison puts it back and at the end of the quarter it drops. Sandia takes it 56 to 48. Now the Rio Rancho wrestling team won their most recent tournament in Texas and in doing so earned a national ranking. Tonight's player of the week was a perfect performer. Performer. Rio Rancho senior Lionel Sierra was perfect at the Grapevine duels this weekend. He won all eight of his matches and also earned All-America status during the holiday break at a national tournament in Reno. Rio Rancho's Lionel Sierra, our New Mexico game day player of the week. Scorpions lose on the road in Wichita 4-1. Good, thanks. Look at our warmer weather when we come back. Eyewitness News 4 is sponsored by Sonic. How you doing? The burger for the number six there? The lettuce and tomato in that, is that real fresh? Yeah, it's fresh. I got a pet rabbit in the back. Near vicious, this thing yeah. is. Uh oh I can't, I can't give this. Oh. You ready? What do you say, buddy? Give Here it a go. Ready. How you like that? Oh. Fresh made to order. Sonic does it, others don't. Get a made to order brown bag special. Two classic burgers, two large fries or tater tots, and two drinks for $6.49. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. A little bit of pepper on that oh. one. The Eyewitness News 4 Sports Sticker is sponsored by your local Firestone retail stores. We were just sitting at the dinner table having dinner. I made ribs, of course, because my husband loves ribs. And the phone rang. I looked at him and he looked at me, and I could just tell in his eyes. Oh, telemarketers. And I just said, Woohoo! It might be Quest. We've made some big changes at Quest, and people are noticing we want you to get the best value possible. So we'll let you know if there's a new plan that could save you money. Unfortunately, it was just my sister. Hi, Marion. How you doing? What's going on here? We like to call it our spirit of service in action. Chilly weather outside means we're cooking up hot deals inside at the January RV and Boat Show this weekend. New models are in, and the New Mexico RV dealers want to move them out at low, low prices. Eight dealers at one location competing for your business. Just three days with low interest rates. Slash prices on 2003 models, too. Motorhomes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, van campers, boats, and more at take-home prices. The January RV and Boat Show this Friday and Saturday, 10 to 8, Sunday, 10 to 5. Louisiana and Lomas behind the Cooperage. Don't you dare miss it. Who do you think you are? I'll show you who's the Who boss here. Who do you think you are? I'll show you who's the boss what here. What lessons will you share with your family this season? If you're being abused and need help immediately, call 911. Or if you need to know about shelters or other options, call the domestic violence hotline. And if you're the abuser, we can also offer help. So before you lift your fist, lift your phone. You can spend quality time with your family and friends. Or you can spend your time with us. At KOBTV.com, you can watch your investments 24 hours a day. Keep an eye on your stocks or mutual funds with Market Browser, only at KOBTV.com.
When you make Eyewitness News for today part of your daily routine, you get live coverage of breaking news. Firefighters work to repair a gas leak. You get the latest developments on New Mexico's top stories. The Albuquerque Public School Superintendent will get her pay raise. Plus, you get more local weather coverage and traffic reports every 10 minutes that'll show you the day's forecast and help with your commute. And we won't waste your time. So watch Steve Stucker and Monica Armenta weekdays beginning at 5 a.m. on Eyewitness News for today, working for you. It's finally open, the all-new Explora Science Center. Come out and see New Mexico's largest interactive museum of science, technology, and art. Explora Science Center on Mountain Road next to the New Mexico Museum of Natural History is five times bigger and filled with 250 hands-on exhibits that will amaze you and your children. Come out and be one of the first to enjoy this truly unique and fun experience. Explora is brought to you by these sponsors and KOB-TV Channel 4, working for you. Wrap up the first week of the new year tomorrow. You know, well, there's only 51 weeks left in this year. It's going by real quick. Here's a look at your day planner for tomorrow as we head through the afternoon. Increasing high clouds. We'll see temperatures in the low to mid 40s for highs tomorrow. Upper 40s for Thursday and a little breezy and cooler as we wrap up the weekend. And thanks for making us your choice for news at 10 o'clock. Good night. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. More New Mexicans watch Eyewitness News 4 than any other news organization in the state. Later on The Tonight Show, it started with Tom Cruise and Jay having a slight misunderstanding. That's very odd. I see. I, my mind doesn't even go there, Jay. Then.